Right. I've been seeing a lot of things online lately saying that you should always high pass filter your mixes and masters. Some audio scholars out there even say that this is some secret to loud masters. So, should you be doing this? or you're actually ruining your music. My name's Josh, welcome to the video. I'm a mastering engineer and this video is going to be, should you high pass your mix? So I'm just gonna cut straight to the point. The answer to this question is, it depends. Now, before you click off your video and flip your table in anger because this was a waste of 30 seconds of your life, just hold on champ. Let's dive a little bit deeper and discuss three scenarios where I might use a high pass filter or where I might not. Scenario one, the recording stage. So whenever I'm recording anything, I always aim to achieve frequency balance at the source. And we can influence frequency balance in a recording by choosing different microphones, different polar patterns, different microphone techniques. So that could be the distance or how close the vocalist is, uh, the room. But yeah, all of these things allow us to control how something sounds at the recording stage. For example, you're doing a vocal recording and you notice the vocal has too much low end when you're doing a sound check. Should you A, keep recording and cut it away later with a filter? B, make sure there are no resonances through the stand, try a different microphone or adjust the microphone position to reduce proximity effect. C, give up. Congratulations, you absolute legend. The correct answer is B. If you can fix any balance issues at the recording stage, it will always, always result in a better end product. Scenario two, the mixing stage. The most common use case for these is to make space for instruments to make sure things aren't clashing in the low end. The busier the mix, the more you may need to do this. Here's two examples of when to use filters and when to not use filters in mixing. Example one, let one to two instruments win in the sub department. For example, a very basic mix with drums, bass, guitars and vocals. If your mix sounds generally cloudy in the low end and unclear, you may need to filter out a little bit of low end out of the panned instruments like guitars or vocal reverbs or delays, and that will help give your mix an overall more solid tight low end. This is not a go-to rule. You have to listen to make sure you're not thinning things out or ruining the sound of the guitars or the effects. So remember to use your ears. Example number two, don't always high pass filter your vocals. So many people reach for filters without even thinking and just crank them up to 50, 80, 120 without even listening to the vocal in the first place. Now, if you love the sound of thin and nasally vocals, you do you champ, but you're probably the minority on that one. If your vocals are muddy and generally have too much low end in the mix, then I'd recommend just using a very broad, gentle shelf to kind of balance that body of the vocal. This may work, this may not. You may actually need to use a filter, but the key point to this is use your ears. Scenario three, the mastering stage. So if you're attempting to master your own music and you're trying to fix a bunch of low end problems in the master, go back to the mix. The mix isn't finished if you're trying to fix problems in the mastering stage. As a mastering engineer, I get sent mixes that I didn't have control over the mix. Obviously, I can give feedback on client mixes and they can send a tweak if I need it. But generally, as a mastering engineer, high pass filters can be useful when the sub energy is a little bit too overwhelming, the mix just feels overall too weighty or heavy, or I want to give the low end a little bit more focus or punch in the higher low end frequencies. I think it's worth mentioning when I'm mastering, I predominantly use outboard gear. So the filters on these can sound a lot more forgiving and pleasant and natural than a digital EQ. You can generally tighten up the low end with analog gear without really thinning it out too much. Where plugins can sound a lot more aggressive and it's quite easy to thin out things with uh, plugin EQs. So a complete summary of the video, should you high pass your mix? If it sounds good, yes. If it doesn't sound good, no. This is gonna just be the conclusion to every single one of my videos. <laughs> and the key takeaways of this video are you should, point number one, aim to achieve frequency balance at the recording stage. Number two, filters are just another tool that you can add to your mixing toolbox and use them to get a sound where you want it to go. 
Generally, this can be to make space for a lot of instruments while mixing. Point number three, don't use them if it doesn't need it. There's nothing worse than getting stuck in a bad habit of always chucking them on everything and then you wonder why your mix is sounding thin and weak. That's probably why. The key is balance. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my style of content where I go into a bit more nuance on a seemingly simple question, consider subscribing. And if you want to check out some of my work or potentially work together, you can head to my website in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Remember, use your ears.